In our first Western bracket of March Madness, we have the Rough Around the Edges, Murderer from Bryn's Pass, the Paladin of Cultus, Hank Applebee's, versus the Master Brewer of Drukal, the Searcher of the Snowbloom, Rugar Ailbender. Applebee's comes out strong with a high arcing swing at Rugar drawing blood and sending him tumbling from atop his wagon. Uh, but Alebender's dwarven fortitude, it, it knows no limits. He's, he's feverishly turning the crank of his titterman-crafted wagon. It springs forth a set of bar stools it, and knock Applebee's prone. What a maneuver! Taking advantage of the stunned Hank, Alebender's grabbed two glasses of, and furiously smashed them over Hank's head. He's cut, ladies and gentlemen. Applebee's is in a daze! Wait! What is Alebender doing? He's hes now behind the bar, folks. He's filling a mug from one of his taps. This isn't a time for a drink, Rugar. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I'm getting reports from Arena side that this is no common brew. That's the Drew Call Demon, Rugar's signature finisher. He's got a hold of Applebee's by the hair. He's forcing the drink down his throat. Hank's turning red. Smoke is coming out of his ears. Oh my God, his head's on fire. Hank is done for! Rugar Alebender is victorious! What a showing from both contenders. But two will enter, and only one will leave. I sure hope our next bout gets the crowd as fired up as that last one did. And on to it. In our first eastern bracket, we have the captain of more boats than a starfish has legs. The motion of the ocean himself, Grimby Chum! Versus the best damn barboy you'll ever have serve you, the protector of Zexa, Chucky the Arcanist! Straight down to business, Grimby Chum launches a leaping strike at Chucky, clobbers him in the side of the head. The blow knocks off Chucky's Arcanist helm, revealing his hunched back. It looks like this fight could be over as quickly as Chucky's illusion, because Grimby swings again and sinks his great axe deep into Chucky's hump. This is not looking good, folks. Chucky was the underdog going in, but this could be a clean sweep for Chum. My gods, that is a massive target. But, oh no, it, it seems Chum's weapon is stuck. Chucky raises his gauntlets and hits Grimby with a double blast of red and green energy. Grimby, he, he's reeling back now. He's, trying to recover as quickly as he can, but his axe is still hunchbacked. The bar boy's trying to pull it out himself, but he, he can't quite get his arms around his back. Oh, oh okay, uh, it looks like he's given up on that now. He, he's springing into the air using his magic boots. He's got a hold of the amulet that's around his neck. It's glowing. A blast of white light has just burned a hole into Grimby's chest. Chum's hurt, folks. He's hurt bad. This crowd is going wild. Chucky, Chucky's on Chum now. He's, he's squeezing the captain's head between his hands. He's activating his chest plate, the strength that thing allows him to wield. Grimby's uselessly swatting at Chucky's grasp. It's all over Grimby's head, it's Chum! Chucky the Arcanist takes it, what an upset! Oh, my goodness. Well, stay tuned, folks, for more stunning March Madness action in our next episode. Welcome to the second bracket of the IP March Madness 2020. In the West, we have the ball bag kicking, halfling loving, most elegantly spoken Gorlock half orc, Horik, versus the Joaquin devotee, the woman who can heal any ailment, as long as you've got the coin. Mother Celeste! The cleric wastes no time getting to casting, invoking the golden lady's name herself. By Joaquin's will, Hork appears to be paralyzed. Mother Celeste is immediately casting again, summoning her spiritual weapon. A huge statue of Joaquin's hover over Hork's head. She's ready to end this one early, folks. W wait a second, I, I see movement. Hork has broken free of Celeste's hold person. He's... He's moving in with his axe. A massive swing! It sinks deep into Celeste's collarbone. Hork lands a brutal kick to her chest. 
Mother Celeste has lived a long life, ladies and germs, but it looks like it's finally come to an end. No! Mother Celeste has healed herself! She's back on her feet! You can barely see where Hork even cleaved into her! No, there's not much time for respite. Hork, Hork's on her in a flash. He's, he's land, lands yet another devastating slash, but she heals herself again! How long can she keep this up? What's going on? Hork's abandoned his axe now, while Mother Celeste is stitching together her wounds. He's grabbed a hold of her spectral statue. Celeste, she's, she's slowed significantly. Hork hoists the statue. It's above his head now. He brings it crashing down on Mother Celeste, crushing her to death. We have a winner! It'll take more than a greater restoration to fix that one. Whew, thrilling stuff. Uh, but we have one more bout for you folks. In the east, we have the meanest chieftain in the Vorgarag Mountains, the Gozer Beater himself, Clash Bone Collector! Versus one for the brawn and one for the brain, the Master Rower. Once they've taken three attempts to sync up, Statdorf! The Etten lumbers forward, arms spread wide, paddles in hand. Clash, he, he, he's keeping his distance, but but the reach they have, the paddles, they fly forward, they, they're brutally sandwiching Clash between them. Now that's how you get oared. Clash, he, he recovers quickly. As another sandwiching, it's coming, coming his way, but he lashes out with his longswords, cleaving the oars in half. He brings the blade back around now, catches Statdorf in the wrist, takes off a hand. That one must have been Dorse because he's bellowing as loud as the crowd. Statdorf drops the broken oars. He grabs a hold of Clash with his one remaining hand. Oh my gods, in all my 20 years, I've, I've never seen anything so vile. Let's just say we know Clash didn't cut off the hand that wipes, folks. There's blood and uh, it's everywhere. And Statdorf's losing a lot of it. He, he can't keep a hold on Clash. The, the orc chieftain is up and swinging again, aiming high. Oh, he catches Stat in the neck. He, he can't get it freeze. Wait, something else is happening. We've seen something similar here, folks. Clash's soiled golden chest plate, it's glowing. He's leaning on his sword hilt. The blade is moving again. A double beheading from Clash Bone Collector. For this winner, no heads are better. Wow. I'd hate to have to be the one that cleans up that arena. But uh, we'll, we'll see you for our third bracket in our next episode. It's time for our third set of March Madness bouts. In the western bracket, we have the con man extraordinaire. Could sell ice to a frost giant, Sardo the Magician, versus the scary witch on the hill, on the outs with her coven, Sea Hag Erica. Sardo quickly approaches Erica. She has yet to reveal her true hag form. The magician has produced a cap of sultany. He's haggling with the hag! She's falling for it! I'm getting reports right from the arena that Erica has paid 20 gold for the cap. She's definitely losing on that deal. Sardo seems to be pushing his luck now. They're, they're bartering over a stick of finding. He's living up to his name, folks. Trying to charge one for the price of dose. And Erica goes for it! Sardo has landed two huge hits to Erica's coin purse. I don't know how much more she can take. It looks like Erica has donned the cap of Sultany now. I, I think she's trying to use the stick to find herself a win here, but it's clear the items are fake. She looks angry, folks. This could be bad for Sardo. Erica drops her magical disguise. She, she's caught Sardo in her terrifying gaze. He's, he's clutching his chest. He looks incredibly pale. Sardo has fallen over dead from fright. Erica's done it. I didn't think the old hag had it in her, but... No. How is this How is this possible? S Sardo, he's he's alive. Oh, I, I, I'm being corrected now. He's undead. Sardo is back on his feet now. He has a hold of Erica. He's, he's torn one of her arms clean off. A wound too grievous to withstand. Erica is down. And she ain't getting back up. We have our true winner, folks. Sardo the Revenant. Uh, these bouts can surprise even me. Uh, our contenders, they're, they're fierce and determined. Onto our eastern bracket. We have the common hostile work environments. 
the man standing between you and the western gate, Roland Wright versus the boastest with the mostest, the infinite hero, Tolstov Melanin. Roland, he comes out strong, landing across both Bolt and Tolstov's shoulder. Wright wastes no time closing the gap. He's got Tolstov in a lock. Now he's smothering the infinite hero with a makeshift face mask. But Tolstov thrusts an elbow back, breaking Roland's hold. He's, he scrambles to his feet and he's... he's... he's running away. Uh, Tolstov is actively running from his combatant. I'm not sure where this strategy is going, but he's certainly doing his best to maintain social distancing. Hold on. Tolstov has stopped. He's picked something up from the arena floor. It's Erika's arm! Tolstov begins savagely beating Roland with the hag arm. But he's quickly getting tired. I, I don't think he's experienced much physical exertion before, folks. Roland takes his opportunity in between swipes from Tolstov. He's, he does what he does best, relinquishing Tolstov of his weapon, drives it into his chest. The now finite hero is defeated. Roland Wright takes the bracket. By Grabthar's hammer, these were some eccentric matchups. Stay tuned for the final bracket of the eighth finals in our next episode. Welcome to the final bracket of the eighth finals. For our western bout, we have the irresistibly breathy seductress, the one-stop shop for all your giant shadow toad needs, Isabella Good versus the water-breathing potion master crafter, the worst best friend you'll ever have, Brenda. Isabella immediately drops her illusion to magic, showing the crowd her true Anna's hag form. Look at those biceps! Brendel fumbles for a potion bottle, but Izzy is having none of it. She's got a hold of the self-proclaimed alchemist and is squeezing the life out of him. Oh, not even Izzy could prescribe Brendel something for that pain. Good has dropped Brendel now. He, he looks to be in pretty rough shape. His firebolts are going wild. He couldn't hit the broad side of a mama breathing pod. Isabella's produced some sort of black dagger with, with wires connected to it. She lands a stab deep into Brendel's chest. Where in a sparrow do these wires run to? Th they're glowing now. I've never seen anything like this. Where, where did that table come from? Then? There's something under a sheet, folks. It's it's moving. Isabella's raised a flesh golem, ladies and gentlemen. It's missing a head and an arm, but the one it does have makes short work of smashing Brendel into the arena floor. Isabella Good has done it. Take a number. The doctor is in. And for our eastern bracket, we have the wooden idol that could, the heart of a lion with the body of a badger, bury at the vicious. Versus heir to the family fortune, the vainest mare in Aspara, Blake Lakely. Jumping to that 20 initiative, Barry lunges for Lakely, tearing into the ca canvas of a painting. The arena is littered in portraits of Blake Lakely. Barry looks confused, folks. He tears into another Blake, only to get a mouthful of painted cloth. Looks like the mayor has lost Badger in his egocentric house of Blake mirrors. Even I've lost some folks. But the Badger is nothing if not a wild animal. Barry's sniffing the ground now. He appears to have found something. Catching a whiff of that lavender-scented beeswax Blake uses to perfect that head of hair. A third growl and lunge from Barry, and he's found him! Barry at the vicious has a vice grip on Blake Lakely's throat. Tearing right through it. The mare is down for the count. That is a badger in my pocket. And I'm happy to see you. Barry wins. Well, that one was bloody and necromantic just the way I like them. Stay tuned for the first bracket of our quarterfinals in the next episode. Welcome to the first bracket of the IP March Madness quarterfinals. In the West, be it restaurant or man, the dwarf who closes down Applebee's, Rugar Alebender, versus the half-orc with no time for gods or old women, Horik. Horik steps up and he, he's sheathing his axe. Oh, I, I know what this is, ladies and gentlemen. He's, he's switching tactics since his last fight. He's using his cunning conversationalist maneuver. Hork is talking non-stop. Rugar is frantically clutching his head, trying to plug his ears. Rugar stumbles to his beer wagon. He's, he starts to man the taps. He begins chugging down ale after ale after ale. 
The liquor seems to be helping him cope. He's talking back to Horik now. They're, they're holding a conversation that is completely incomprehensible. Rugar downs another mug full, and another, and two more. It seems the dwarf has turned the tables on Horik. The half-orc is now clutching his head. Blood is coming out of his ears. Oh my gods, members of the crowd in the front row are falling over dead. Horik's been driven to his knees now. Rugar standing over him. He's finishing yet another drink and pulling out his dagger. Finishing off Horik as well. Rugar takes his second bout. You know what they say about brewing, folks? It's a cutthroat industry. For our eastern bracket. He's chummed the waters and's ready for a feeding frenzy. Chucky the Arcanist versus Hot Stuff. He's burning down the house. Clash Bone Collector. Chucky goes for the air spring maneuver, activating his boots again. But Clash was ready for it. He winds up with his long sword like a batter waiting for the perfect pitch. His swing smashes into Chucky's breastplate, caving it in. Chucky looks winded from the blow. He struggles to get back to his feet as he readies a gauntlet blast at Clash. But the Chieftain, he's got Chucky by the wrist. He's activating his own breastplate. Easily able to overpower Chucky's, the Arcanist gauntlet blast are turned in on himself, going off in his face. Piece by piece, Clash strips Chucky of his Arcanist armor. Chucky tries to roll away, but he's stuck on his hump like a turtle on its back. One gut-wrenching stomp to Chucky's head, and it's all over. Clash Bone Collector is moving on to the semifinals. We're nearing the end game now, folks. Stay tuned for the second quarterfinal bracket in the next episode. Let's get ready to rumble. It's time for our second quarterfinals bracket. For our bout in the West. We have the bona fide hag killer looking to put another one on the scoreboard. Sardo the Revenant versus Don't tell her you're into magic, cause she'll offer you a deal you cannot refuse. Isabella Good. With a thunderous clap, Sardo lets loose a magical thunder wave. Isabella braces herself, but she takes the brunt of it. Rebounding right back into the fight, though, using her Anna's hag strength, she stops another thunder wave attempt. She has Sardo by the wrists. He's struggling to get free of her grip. They're entered into this strange tug of war. Sardo's flesh can't take the strain. It's it's starting to tear. Izzy has ripped off Sardo's hands. The Revenant seems unfazed, though, as he pummels Isabella with his stumps, dealing some serious damage. Still clutching the severed appendages, Izzy performs some kind of incantation over them. She hurls the hands at Sardo. She's animated them. They're crawling all over his body, clawing and slashing at its back. Izzy's deliver their reach around straight from the 8th layer of the abyss. Sardo manages to shake off his hands, crushing them underfoot. He catches Isabella with his vengeful glare. Izzy's paralyzed. She's helpless. Sardo swings in with his stumps once again, delivering his malpractice suit because this doctor's license has been revoked. Sardo the Revenant will continue to the semi-finals. Returning in the East. The man with the finite time for infinite heroes, Roland Wright. Versus number 20 in initiative, but number one in our hearts, Barry at the Vicious. Living up to his name, Barry gets in and lands a deep claw slash to Roland's leg. Too close for his crossbow, Roland drops it to his side to let it dangle from the chain, connecting the weapon to his wrist. He's got his signature smuggling cloak out now. He's tossed it over Barry's head, trying to temporarily blind the badger. But it only seems to infuriate the furry ball of fury as he tears right through it in seconds. Roland attempts to take two quick steps backwards, but Barry snags the guard's crossbow in his teeth. He's violently shaking his head back and forth. Roland is being pulled off of his feet. He's knocked prone. Roland's in giant trouble from this giant badger. Barry is on him in a flash to finish this bout the only way a wild animal forced to fight to the death in a tiny arena for our enjoyment can. Instinctually and bloody. Well, there you have it, folks. We are only two brackets away from crowning a winner. So find out who's moving into the finals in our next episode. Hey there, sports fans. Welcome to the semifinals of the IP March Madness 2020. Where West meets East. Ale Master meets Orc Chieftain. Con Man turn Revenant meets Wooden Idol turn Badger. 
I know you're all itching to get into the action, and so are our competitors. In our first bout, it's Rugar Railbender versus Clash Bone Collector. Rugar immediately deploys his roving tavern, and still opening up his wagon, getting behind the taps, he's motioning for Clash to take a seat, and Clash takes a seat! Hailbender is eyeing him up now. They seem to be making some sort of small talk. The dwarf is pouring a drink. He, he slides it across the bar top right into the orc's open hand. The orc drinks it! Reports from the arena floor are in. It appears that Clash is getting some sage advice from Rugar. He pours him another drink. I've never seen this tactic work so flawlessly before, folks. But what is the dwarf's next move? He's pulled another lever on his wagon. And oh my gods, what is that thing? A strange spider-like eel creature has crawled out of a compartment in the back of Rugar's wagon. It's leaping on Clash. The orc seems paralyzed as the creature starts to tattoo his forehead. They're just leaving the arena. Clash and the creature have abandoned the fight. We've seen some strange things in this contest, but that one takes a cake. Rugar Ailbender has won his way into the finals. In our next bout, it's Sardo the Revenant versus Barry at the Vicious. It looks like Sardo has gotten some copper replacement hands in between matches. He swings him at Barry, easily connecting with the Badger. Sardo's metal prosthetics cripple the animal's back end. Barry's not giving up yet, though he lashes out with blood-stained claws. But he, he doesn't have the reach or mobility to land a strike. Sardo is just toying with him now. The magician moves in to deliver the final blow, turning Barry back into a wooden idol. He scooped Barry up from the dirt floor now. He's, he's carrying him over to, uh, to a halfling in the crowd. Sardo is attempting to sell Barry off. I can't hear them up here in the booth, but I'm going to direct feed right from the action. Sardo says 15 gold pieces. The halfling says nothing for less than a second. Sardo says he can go as low as 10 gold pieces. The halfling opens his mouth to reply. Sardo says, okay, okay, five gold pieces. The halfling accepts. Sardo will face Rugar in the finals in our next episode. Welcome one, welcome all to the finals. This is what it's all been building up to, folks. Our competitors have battled through it all. From two-thirds of Hag Coven and Ferocious Wooden Badger, to the Paladin of Cultist Finest and every combatant with an ounce of Orcish blood, we have Rugar Ailbender versus Sardo the Revenant Magician. But wait! There's more! Our arena has been retrofitted tonight, ladies and gentlemen. It now consists of three concentric rings that give way to liquid hot magma beneath. The longer the fight lasts, the smaller the arena will get. If they don't close it out fast, they'll both end up cooking. Let's get ready to crumble! Hale Banner makes a break for his wagon, looking to deploy the bar. It looks like Sardo has received yet another modification in between matches. His copper hands have been sharpened into points. He's tossing them on the ground. Now I think I know what's coming next. Yes! Sardo has catapulted a hand at Rugar. It pierces the dwarf's shoulder as he stumbles forward. Sardo launches his second hand. The blow knocks Rugar completely off his feet. He goes down in the dirt. There's our first arena shift. I can feel the heat all the way up here in the booth. Rugar is crawling for the offensive safety of his wagon, but Sardo easily catches up to him and begins pummeling him with his bloodless stumps. How is this not over? It is true what they say, stout as a dwarf, stout as an alebender ale. Sardo swings in for another round of beatings, but Rugar is recovering. He's managed to get into his traveling brewer's kit and has Sardo's arms wrapped in subtubing. With a mighty kick, Rugar opens up some breathing room and he's back on his feet. Still bleeding from those catapult wounds, Ailbender gets to his wagon, pulling a, a red lever. This is new. It looks like Sardo wasn't the only one to get some upgrades in between bouts. The top of Rugar's wagon has popped open to reveal a mounted ballista. Rugar takes aim and he fires. Sardo throws up an arcane shield, but oh my gods, it's a fireball bolt. It's useless. The shield is useless. Sardo's engulfed in flame. He's blown back. Another shot like that and he's done for. Rugar takes aim again. There's the second arena shift! Rugar's wagon is on the edge, going down fast! Ailbender leaps from it. 
I don't think he's gonna make He made it! He's grabbed the edge! Oh, oh no, those those shoulder wounds, they've made him weak, though he's struggling to pull himself up. Sardo's at the edge. He's raising one boot. He's stomping on Rugar's fingers. The dwarf slips. He plummets into the magma. Sorrow the Revenant wins. Sorrow takes it. We have our inaugural March Madness champion. <sighs> well, that was one hell of an event. I hope you've enjoyed IP March Madness 2020. We'll see a whole new batch of competitors in the next year.